if I can ask you your first question, how did you get the idea for guerrilla marketing? I had written, my first book was called Earning Money Without a Job. People say, you the guy wrote Earning Money Without Working? I said, no, 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 Earning Money Without a Job. You've got to work your tail off. <laughs> that was followed up with another book about ways that people are earning money around the world. It was called 555 Ways to Earn mm -hmm. Extra Money. Because of those books, I was invited to teach at Berkeley, the University of California, Berkeley, the Extension Division, and I started teaching the course which they wanted to call Alternatives to the 9 to 5 Job, which was good to ask me because since 1971, I've been working a three-day week from my home. At any rate, those two books led to me having a pretty popular class at Berkeley, and one day some of the kids in the class uh, asked me if I could recommend a book for them uh, on marketing. They said all of us have Levi's. Uh, long hair, uh, and we have great ideas, but we don't have any idea how to market what our ideas are. So uh, as a result, I said, I'll find a good book for you. Be back with it next week. And uh, <laughs> I couldn't find one. I scour the libraries at Berkeley, Stanford, cities of San Francisco, and San Jose. I couldn't find any books for companies uh, on marketing for companies with, who are investing less than $300,000 a month which was not the kids in my class. So uh, I had made them a promise, so I wrote a book for them. Uh, it was, I think I had a list of 527 ways to market your business uh, without investing money, which is a good thing for them, but a horrible title for a book. So I called it Guerrilla Marketing, because the kids <laughs> in my class wanted what gorillas want. They wanted the conventional goals. They wanted you know, financial independence and freedom and balance. Uh, and uh, that gorillas want victory, but they had to go about it in unconventional ways, which is right. just what gorillas have to do. So that's why I called it guerrilla marketing. It was such a natural for what I had put down for them. So that's how I wrote the first book. I think every book I've written has been in response to a need, and the need at that point was the kids in my class. Many They went out to form Microsoft and Apple. Uh, they went out to get to run the show at, at Hewlett Packard and Oracle. But the, and right now, many of the Silicon Valley uh, Fortune 100 or Fortune 500 are kids who are in my class. Who are I love the uh, the use that Mini has used for guerrilla marketing with all of their concepts. They've really taken it to a great level. Who has? Mini, the car company. Oh yes, yes. I, I, They've I, done I, some I, some pretty amazing things, and most of them have been ideas straight out of your book. I've traced back. You know what's happening, Joel? Uh, guerrilla marketing has become uh, ma mainstream marketing because it's embraced around the world. The books are in 62 languages now, and we've sold 21 million copies. And it used to be such a uh, offbeat, maverick way of doing marketing, but not really anymore because everybody's discovering it. So I'm delighted that many have gotten their ideas from my books. Uh, that's why I wrote them. <laughs> they had a need for it, and I try to respond to needs. Right. How did you get um, some of the ideas that you wrote down in your book? Did they just come to you? No, it's not like that. I, I had uh, worked in advertising agencies for 12 years, big ones, um, in the United States, in Chicago, in San Francisco, and in London. And uh, I went back to Chicago, which is, uh, had been my home base. I was raised there. So my White Sox used to despise your Red Sox, but we love them now. Still, but, uh, I was raised in Chicago in 12 years in advertising agencies. I realized I did not want to spend the rest of my life living in that kind of weather. Uh, I had everything else I vowed I'd have by the time I was 30, you know, corner office, a vice presidency, and a major advertising agency, but I didn't count on that bad weather. So I moved to San Francisco, and once I was there, I had a couple of clients on my own, and uh, Alberto Culver and Quaker Roach. So I was able to exist just with those clients, and I found that uh, working from my home, I was protected from committees and meetings and memos. And as a result, I could accomplish in three days, which uh, what used to take me five days. Uh, and as a result, I thought I ought to write a book about this for other people because there's really not that much special about me. So I formed a little – sorry, I called it a modular advertising agency because it was one person. It was just me. And yet um, I connected up with people who had all the allied fields that people expect from an ad agency. And so I did work for a lot of little clients. And 
it, it was after about four years of doing that and the 12 years of advertising experience that gave me almost 527 ideas. And so that's, that's where the ideas came for that first book and many of the others. I was lucky to have those kind of, I love the corporate life and to work a giant company, uh, for, uh, to work at, uh, for giant companies with huge budgets and then to work for fledgling brand new companies, uh, who didn't know beans about marketing that had very tiny budgets. We had to make do, uh, with one dollar what used to take a hundred dollars to do. So real life experience, uh, both, both ends of the court was the reason that I was able to write that book and the 57 that have followed. Well, that, that's really cool. I didn't know you had such a varied background in that kind of a field. So I, I can definitely see how that came into your books and formed a lot of those ideas. Who, uh, who's the intended readership that you wrote the book for? Is it for the college student or is it for the, um, the entrepreneur that's trying to break out that's who the small business that was struggling and the medium-sized businesses that were struggling. I just realized once I got away from the, the big companies like Procter & Gamble and AT&T and General Motors, I realized that the small guys didn't really know much about marketing and the things they learned in college weren't very pertinent to the world of today, the today of when I first wrote that book in 1984. And I, I, it just dawned to me that there was that yawning need out there for small businesses and small businesses were exploding around the United States starting in the 80s. And so they needed what I had, and I had what they needed. So it was a, it was a perfect match. And so it turns out, then I started getting <laughs> invited to speak before Fortune 500 companies. And it dawned on me then they realized they want to use a lot of those tactics because they wanted to save money. They wanted to get the most for their marketing investment. And they realized marketing had changed since they had learned it in school. And they realized they could learn all those things in the guerrilla and guerrilla marketing and the books that followed. And it turns out that my audience now is businesses of all sizes. You hit it on the button because I first wrote it for entrepreneurs just trying to break out and get noticed. But it turns out uh, a lot of them are, have bought the books. But usually it's small business owners, medium, and now huge business owners. I do consulting to Mercedes-Benz of North America. And I've done work for a lot of huge companies and they buy many copies of the book at the same at the same time. 3M. There are just lots of huge companies that want to learn about guerrilla marketing. And so the market I intended it for has broadened. And uh, when I tell you my books are in 62 languages, I've got to append that by saying I don't understand 61 editions of my own book because although I know about market, I don't I don't know uh, how to speak Croatian or or, uh, or Dutch. So uh, I, I, the books have taken on a life of their own. I never knew that would happen. I never even thought about the idea of foreign translations. But it turns out that the world is embracing it. It is replacing mainstream marketing. And uh, oh, I don't think it will ever die, but other, other good marketing concepts will come along. But luckily, just like uh, social media has really opened up a whole branch to uh, marketing, and I do a lot of speaking on the subject. Okay. And I, I know that I personally use a lot of your ideas to uh, integrate into social media and how to reach those kind of uh, clients. What, wow! Where exactly. do you see the where do you see the new social media and online market? Um, where do you see it going? 